right? Okay, we'll start. Good afternoon, everybody. So this is uh, the tax panel. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about some very complex stuff, uh, which is not routine, in the sense that the tax laws of India are not very happy. Uh, they are convoluted in many ways, and litigation is part of our life. So we have two very eminent speakers with us in this panel, uh, Mr. Ashok Kumar. He is a barrister from Australia. And uh, when I was communicating with him uh, to give his speech, uh, he asked me, what should I speak about? And I said, look, uh, you know, uh, India is uh, marching towards uh, rolling out GST in the next one year, I don't know. Uh, and it will be good for us to understand uh, how has Australia dealt with GST, because that was the last country in, the, in this century where, which went live uh, insofar as GST was concerned. And that was sometime around 98, 99, if I'm not mistaken, 2000, right. And uh, there's a lot of learning uh, that Australia has uh, insofar as implementation of GST is concerned. So therefore, Ashok has been kind enough to agree uh, to speak about the learnings of Australia insofar as GST is concerned and what recommendation he has for us Indians uh, as we march into the GST regime in the coming uh, you know, months. Uh, on my left is uh, Krishan uh, Malhotra. He is a veteran tax professional, uh, more than 25, uh, 26 years in active tax consulting and tax representation before various authorities. Uh, he is uh, an expert in corporate international tax so he and I spoke and I said, uh, look, it makes a lot of sense for you to speak about the transfer pricing disputes that India is facing, uh, given that significant high pitch litigation is currently being pursued before various high courts and even the Supreme Court. So he has come with uh, him, uh, he has brought with him a bag full of information about uh, the raging dispute under the regnant laws of transfer pricing in India as relevant for international transfer pricing transactions. That said, uh, so the order of the day is going to be as follows. Uh, we'll, I'll request Mr. Kumar to uh, you know, speak about his, his presentation, about uh, what he has brought for us. And then Krishan will make his presentation. And thereafter, I shall do a sum up and contribute my uh, thoughts uh, to on the whole issue. Over to you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Um, uh, Kumar. Thank you. Um, these taxes are something, um, they, they say in life there are two things you can't escape, death and taxes. The GST is one of those things in which, by and large, every transaction will have tax implications. Um, the, it's a um, pretty straightforward tax uh, in one sense, um, it has replaced a whole series of in Australia, I don't think it's also happening in, in, in India. It replaces a whole series of tax, different rates of tax, and GX, um, and output tax. Wherever a sale occurs, um, um, there's a 10% federal, in your case, there's a 10% um, tax on the sale or service provided, um, um, plus another 10% for the, um, the state as well. So, um, of course, when there are taxes, there are exceptions. The government's policy in Australia was not to create inflation in relation to leases. So, um, the other, other certain types of fresh produce was um, resolved to be, because of the complex politics in Australia, as compared to New Zealand, by the way, I was in New Zealand when that tax was introduced in 1987. I was working for two shows, the accounting fair. Um, so there are complexities because of those exemptions. Um, uh, the Australian government policy was it, it doesn't tax on export, um, but when you uh, get the um, product ready for sale for export, there's also always you've bought products in which they are taxed. Um, so uh, you account for your um, taxes, the imports that have went into producing the product. Um, and when 
you sell it, all the tax <coughs> in relation to that is um, um, tax-free. You claim it for the government. Um, uh, rent, the residential rent is uh, uh, tax-free. Um, international sea and air travel is tax-free. Um, so there, the, the basic food for um, not processed food, the processed food is subject to normal tax. Um, of course, the charitable activities are exempt, religious services are exempt, um, local government rates don't have taxes on them. Um, uh, as a mechanism to uh, um, minimize the uh, tax impact, um, a sale of business um, is normally, if existing in um, um, businesses, so as a government concern is normally exempt from tax. So there's certain mechanism uh, to take account of that. Otherwise, we'll create hardship on a purchaser who has to pay a, a lump sum of money of 10% of the purchase price. Um, um, and um, um, the vendor, of course, loads uh, the tax um, from the purchaser and pays it on. So it doesn't affect the seller, but it affects the purchaser. So there's a, um, in New Zealand they call zero rating or sale is a going concern. Um, um, so some of the features to capture the, um, um, uh, the this tax effective is um, there has to be a value. It must be exchanged for value. Um, um, and, uh, there has to be a business or enterprise being carried out. Um, those are the only people who can charge GST, and often problems have arisen in the past where an entity was not, supposed, uh, not registered with GST, and, and they could not charge GST, where the payer of GST tried to claim GST, the input tax component, they ran into trouble. Um, um, there's always this connection, issue connection to Australia, so in your case it will be connection to India. Um, and of course, registration requirement uh, is paramount. Um, the requirement uh, changes all the time. Um, uh, as to um, the, you have to have a certain amount of turnover before you can register for the tax. I don't know what the threshold is in India, but Australia has got a system where only businesses making up a certain turnover. Uh, the small businesses are exempt. Um, so, but certain, certain businesses the government decided should not be exempt from filing a, 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 or paying the tax, which like taxi industry, they deal with cash. So regardless what their turnover is, they still have to be registered. Um, in Australia in the past, there have been problems as to who will register for GST. Sometimes things are done through joint venture enterprises. So, um, a purchase may be made by some other entity. Uh, it's part of the joint venture. So one has to be very diligent and careful in determining <coughs> that the right entity claim, uh, is registered with GST so that they can claim the uh, GST component. So um, it will be, in your case, a $100 sale with GST on it uh, of, of 10 and 10, it will be $120. Um, so uh, all you do, the formula would be one one sixth of it is basically would be GST. So um, in our case in Australia, the GST rate is still 10 percent, so it's one eleventh. So that wh whenever you buy something for your business, um, you can claim your input tax credit. Um, and when you uh, the idea of the tax, of course, is to um, um, the ultimate consumer pays the full tax. Um, um, in terms of what enterprise uh, could register, the, the Australian laws are very flexible. Uh, in, in branches can also register for GST. Um, uh,
I talked about the difference where, in, in your case, the um, GST is levied by both the uh, state uh, state government as well as the federal government, the central government. Um, in our case, um, and it, in the end, becomes how they share the pie, the tax revenue, and they um, the state then agreed to a formula to share the state revenue, the the revenue, the GST revenue. And that's how they have um, developed um, the system to distribute. I think in your case, half already goes to the state. Um, um, as I said, one of the components was to be registered uh, uh, for business. Sometimes the commissioner has um, challenged whether a business should be in claiming input, particularly where there are losses in uh, losses. Of course, the commissioner doesn't want to pay uh, refund tax all the time to a business that's making loss. So it has to be a genuine business. Um, one of the ways um, is that they are fairly like they're making repetitive transactions. In usual, what is the going concern? So only going concerns are, are businesses that uh, would be able to register for GST. Um, um, One area that was um, uh, creating problems for us um, was in the area of, as I said, uh, the, um, um, if a property is lent, uh, let out for rent um, uh, as a resident, it is not subject to GST because the government's policy was not to create inflation in relation to rent, um, whereas uh, for all commercial um, undertakings, um, there was a tax. Of course, there will be input tax, so the input tax would be then um, claimed by the business anyway. Um, um, as part of the... So, in that sense, it creates neutral, neutrality. Um, but sometimes they, they, they could be businesses where they run from home, where, uh, where someone is taken um, for part business, part residence. They, 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 in those were the scenarios in which um, we had um, uh, problems in Australia. So definitely a full commercial property, uh, commercial rent will be subject to full tax. Um, there may be, uh, the Australia dealt with some rulings whereby the hybrid was accepted and there was a formula where only 50% of the input tax could be claimed. It's one way of resolving. And there were a whole series, and there's still a lot of GST what we have is a um, um, ruling system in GST where you can get an advanced ruling from the... Um, um, the two ruling systems, there's a public ruling system and a private ruling system. Um, the public, ru public ruling system, um, there's a document put out by the commissioner um, as to how he'll interpret the particular treatment of GST. In terms of... Um, uh, the private, you can actually get advance ruling from the commissioner how give them all the facts, provided the facts um, that on which the assumption of the tax is based is correct. Um, uh, you get a pretty certain reason as to how the commissioner will treat your uh, um, um, uh, taxation in relation to that if there's a dispute. Um, generally acting in good faith, you've told them everything. Um, that's enough to, um, because one of the other issues always is that um, I've come across where they have been over claim for GST. When the tax kicks in, there's a lot of opportunity. When the government systems are not strong, um, uh, people, they present an opportunity to claim large input tax. Input tax normally for a profitable business in one, one, uh, one period, it may have a massive cap capital expenditure. It may be high. Um, so the government has to refund you money because you put uh, money into capital capital purchases. Um, so um, um, the opportunities like that has to be get, like that has to be um, 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 taken account. Of. Um, there's always for lawyers. There's always the, we settle. The other topic I go to is the issue of. How are the damages treated, when they, whether they have tax component on them or not? 
So one has to be careful, look at the documents carefully um, when you're doing a settlement, because um, in settlement, um, depends on how you structure it, you might be able to avoid payment of um, tax. Uh, your client could uh, avoid payment of tax. It's hard for me to say uh, what scenario it would be, but there have been scenarios, um, maybe a lease payment, a, a dispute about lease settles, and there's some structured payment. Um, 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 instead of some, uh, some lump sum damages or something like that. So um, there's always would be a, a damage uh, input tax component if it's treated like an income, um, whereas uh, a PIVA damage may not attract GST payment. Um, so one has to look carefully at um, uh, structuring settlement documents um, and see whether you can minimize the tax um, for your um, client. The other topic, um, the problem is a reason is, uh, as I said, uh, where a property that's subject to tax has to have the connection to Australia. Um, um, uh, there was, um, marketing company was at one stage, uh, and I'll give you a case law, um, um, doing work for a Fijian company. The property was based in Fiji. They were marketing timeshare agreement. Um, so the property was actually not connected to, um, in that case it was New Zealand, as an example, and New Zealand. Although, and, and the Australian government also interpret tax in a similar way. That case has been used. So um, one has to see, um, that, that, that becomes a tricky area where um, the law says that if a supply is not concerned with connection to Australia, um, you um, can't, you're not, not entitled to charge GST. In this case, they didn't charge GST to the Fijian company. Um, 